Have any announcements for today? No, no announcements. Visitors and guests. I see a couple of new faces here. We have uh, Deb's sisters are visit, visiting us this weekend from St. Louis, uh, Jonna and Rebecca. So welcome, girls. Good to have you here. Any other visitors or guests? It looks like all St. Paul people. Pastor Long, if you would share praises and concerns with us today. years and that was my first mistake. <laughs> uh, so we want to remember Helen in our prayers uh, as she continues to recover. Uh, Betty uh, uh, Knuckles continues in rehab. She's hoping to get back to Janie's house but she's not there yet but she still swears she's going to go back to work. 
So we need to keep uh, Betty in our prayers as well. Danny Bird continues on in rehab at Carrington. Uh, and we have been asked to pray for a gentleman by the name of Jerry Watson. Jerry Watson. Uh, Jerry is 87 and has just been diagnosed with leukemia. So he's uh, in need of our prayers as well. Oh, one more. Ernestine Dalton uh, is going to have hip surgery this Wednesday. So we want to remember her in a hip replacement. Other prayer requests that you have this morning. Amen to that. How long are y'all going to be here? Till tomorrow. Oh, till tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll pray you up today. Okay. <laughs> and we, we'll they trust. holiday traffic to visit. <laughs> I'm telling you. Really. Uh-huh. Our niece, Michaela, we have been praying for, and she continues to uh, struggle through the medical system. And so yes. I think the biggest prayers at this point is that that medical system will, will come through and, and, and move her forward. Amen to that. Yeah, I guess a lot of folks are having trouble because it's so backed up right now. They're just having trouble. Well, um, I think that's all the prayer concerns. Oh, um, I have oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't turn around. Go ahead. Ladies first. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to be going up to Pennsylvania to see um, my dad and my mom. I've been seeing my mom since uh, she went into a uh, memory care facility um, because she has dementia. And um, of course she has good days and bad and I'd rather not have her have a bad day on the only day that I'm gonna be there in the last six months. Um, but I'll be traveling with Sierra and her boyfriend Terry and my 15 year old Paul and my 13 year old Andrew who has autism and doesn't doesn't talk. Amen so, to that. No animals. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> it, it's been stressful in the past, so. Yeah, it sure has. Well, it's you've been through a lot. Yeah. And we think about you and we love you. And we pray. I, you I know too. it's going to be a good day when you're with your mom. It may not be for you. It may be difficult for you, but I think it's going to be a good day for her. I, I Just having so. you with her. Yeah, for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, pray for Christopher and Data, because Christopher had COVID like two weeks ago. So she's oh, still like really? 14 and locked away. So it's okay. so pretty bad coughs and trouble breathing. So. Amen. Amen. We need to keep all of our young people in our prayers for sure. Yes, George. Amen. And it's been really tough on those folks that are dealing with that, especially after what we've been through the last year or two. Been no picnic for anybody, that's for sure. Uh, I have a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, Julia has stepped up uh, to help us uh, with the sunlight service. May your tribe increase. Uh, in conjunction with that, there's a sign-up sheet on the back table, and it has three slots on it, computer, prayer, and scripture. Don't make me chase you down. <laughs> you all know what we do here. In the scripture, you can read any translation you want, and hopefully you all pray. So, you know, sign up for there and help us out as we go forward. It'll make things a lot easier on Julie and a lot easier on me if we just get people to volunteer and we don't have to you, chase you down. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. That doesn't mean that we're not looking for a person to take over the total coordination. And that position will also be responsible when we get more technology in the sanctuary. So it's gonna be a bigger position. Um, but Julia has stepped in and she's gonna help and we're all gonna pitch in, right? Yes. This means yes. And the other one doesn't know if I like. And don't this. What's that key? I said don't forget this. Right, right. Yeah, we need, see, Keith's getting old. <laughs> and I know it doesn't look and, like uh, it, but there's a lot between those ears. Uh, he needs to communicate to us, and it wouldn't hurt any of us to, to pitch in. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'd just like to add on to that also, Lon, that um, thanks to Julia, but also, you know, a couple weeks ago, Josh said, I can play drums. <laughs> so we appreciate cool. Josh stepping All in. Right. And then All right. Lamar 
who we didn't know could play guitar, all of a sudden comes down when David's not here and steps up for this. Super. And so I just want to thank everybody for doing what needs to be done. Amen. They, stepping in. So. They spoke up thank out you. of the blue and we yeah. all went, wait, what else do you play? You haven't told us. <laughs> so if you're out there, we're looking for you. Just come let us know. I play one thing over here. <laughs> there so, yeah. still are miracles, aren't there? Bye, George. Look at that. Yeah. Cool. So let's sing. Yeah. Amen. Please stand. Stand with us. Thanks.
seated, please. Thank you, Lord, for giving this good place for us to worship together. What a joy to come and be with everyone again. And we thank you for that while we're all seeking in some way to find to find the unity that we all so cherish. Be with us this day and let us remember who we are and why we're here as a nation. Help us to help one another, appreciate and adore what we have here. Please follow and keep us in your path Keep us going so that we know to seek you and to find you for questions that we just can't answer. So be with us, stay with us, and teach us to be the example that Jesus set for all. Amen. When's it going to happen? Here I am. There you are. Here I am, desperate for love, for truth. What are you going to do when you leave this building? Are you going to share with me what you've been learning here today? Or are you just going to bottle it up and pull it out next week for your friends? Now, when I say share, I'm not talking about every tactic you've used on me in the past, like judging my every move, telling me I'm a bad person, pointing fingers, giving me disgusting looks. <laughs> and my favorite is when you tell me that I'm lost. I don't even know what that means to be lost. Do you really think judging me is gonna make me change? Would it make you change? Now, I, I know I'm a bad person. I've, I've done bad things, but I don't need you to tell me that. What I need is for you to pick me up when I fall down, to be there when I'm broken. Yes, there's, there's something missing in me. There's a void in my heart that I don't know how to fill. You have it. You have that thing that makes you whole. You know that person that I need to know. So I'm watching your every move. I'm watching where you go and what you say and do because I'm desperate for something real. I need something genuine to know that there's something more here than this. I mean, this, this can't be it, really. And I think you know that. Listen to me. I need you. I need you to be here for me. I need you to walk out right now, ready and willing to do whatever it takes it's, it may not be comfortable. It may not be easy. But I need you to show me love. What unconditional love really looks like. Stop telling me about this God of yours and show me who he really is. Honestly, I'll probably resist you. I'll probably argue with you and laugh at you. I'll, you know, even when you fall, I'll probably call you a hypocrite. But don't give up on me. Please don't give up on me. So I'm gonna ask you, when's it gonna happen?
I know you're back there. Come on up here. Yay. We're going to have a party. Come on up. Oh, look at you. Look at you. You're already in the party mood. Hello. Do you all want a hat? I've got your hats here. And, and oh, I'm making noise. a blue hat Ooh, look at there and there's a good shot and I have medals oh well you don't have to wear that because you have a beautiful bow in your hair there's you a necklace yes I wouldn't want to upset that would you want a necklace yay there's all kinds in there too what are we celebrating what Amario or fourth of July yeah that, that's close enough fourth of July when we celebrate our independence you want a necklace here buddy <gasps> look at there there you go you can have one the girls have one girls rock look at us mm, yeah i would be afraid to but what does it mean to be free it said we're americans and we're free what does that mean do you know it means that we live in a country that's not owned by someone else right we're free to to live where we want wear clothes that we want, to worship where we want to, right? They don't tell us what to do. But did you know that we have freedom in Christ too? Did you know that? It made me think, see if, see if you can help me pick up this. This is a book bag, and it was it's kind of heavy. It is, like, really heavy. And I'm... Good deal, good deal. And we can all celebrate that we're free as Americans, but we have more freedom in Christ. And that's the wonderful thing. Lots, lots better than fireworks. I have, let's say a prayer, and I have treats in here. You'll have to dig down. There's some new stuff in here. Thank you, Jesus, for making us free from sin. And thank you that we are free as Americans and help us to live in your love and your word always. Amen. Thank you, thank you. You can dig in there. You can have that back. There's, there's popcorn, or there's, yeah. these are, these are sweet and soft. I don't know if they like them. Keith, you got this one on?
I don't mind staying close to you, Lord. Oh, there you go. You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. All right. We working? No. <laughs> oh, our scripture today is from Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall to them, you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. Word of the God, word of God for the people of God. This is another one of those Sundays that I wish we had a guest preacher. Fourth of July is such a wonderful holiday in our nation. And yet the 4th of July is one that makes us think seriously about the role of the church in our society. We celebrate independence. <laughs> but I wonder what that means. Does that mean we're free of religion instead of for religion? <laughs> Freedom, does that mean now I get to do what I like? Our scripture today from Ezekiel is one of the two sections of scripture that you may be familiar with Ezekiel. One is in chapter 39, the dry bones. Everybody loves the dry bones. But this call of Ezekiel is interesting because God says, I have a word for my people. We have to understand where prophets started. It started way back in Moses. You remember the people uh, came out of captivity in Egypt and God summoned them to Mount Sinai and called them forth and they went up got close to the mountain and the thunder and the lightning rolled and the people said, we can't stand to be this close to a holy God. Moses, you go up there for us. And Moses talked to God and said, this is what the people said. And God said, that's a good idea. It's probably good that they not come too close. You'll be the prophet. Because even though they want to be close to me, I want to be close to them. <laughs> And later on in the book of Deuteronomy, um, Moses said, well, you know, I'm getting older now. Have any of y'all noticed that? Time goes on. <laughs> Who will be the prophet? And God says, I'll raise up people just like you from among them to be the prophet. What I get from that is God is absolutely passionate about us understanding what it is that he's doing in the world today. And he's also passionate about us understanding what our place in that plan is. But because God says in this text, Ezekiel, I'm sending you on a job where nobody's going to listen. Why? Because they're hard-headed and rebellious. The very fact that God sent a prophet proves that he wants to communicate with us, but the very fact also is we are hard-headed and we would just as soon go our own way. And that's why words like freedom and independence are so dangerous. <laughs> if we think that we can be independent of God, and continue to enjoy the blessings of God, we're fooling ourselves. We're all going to sing in the final service, God bless America. I don't think the preacher's going to sing it. 
I think what we ought to be doing is praying that God would make us worthy of his blessing. And my friends, instead of us being salt and light in a, in a world that's affecting the world for good, what I find is the world is affecting the church. And the same division and enmity and prejudice and um, hatred that I find in the world is in the church too. And because we're free, we prayed into God's house talking about our rights and our freedom and no one ever talks about obligation. My brothers and sisters, when Jesus told us where to be the salt of the earth, it had nothing to do with flavor. Withful needs the salt of St. Paul United Methodist Church not to make it taste better and be a nicer community. In Jesus' day, salt was not used for taste. It was used to preserve, to keep meat from rotting. God needs us to be in the community as the people of God. And this building is not a rest stop, it's a filling station. And we're here as the prophets. Thus says the Lord. And what does the Lord say to me? The Lord says that he loves everyone. Can you say everyone? everyone. You're just enough Baptists here, we can pull this off. <laughs> everyone. Everyone. Even preachers, believe it or not. And yet the church spends so much time and energy trying to figure out who we can exclude. Jesus says, and did in his ministry, always had room for everybody, even the least. And yet, contemporary Christianity, especially in America, has become country club. We pay our dues, we play when we want, and when we don't like the management, we kick them out. instead of us trying to include those people. It's going to take more than just hanging a sign on our door and saying, open hearts, open minds, open doors. Someone said, if you build a better mousetrap, they'll come. It ain't so. They're not coming. Have you noticed? Why? Because we have padded pews. And while I may say that Jesus is the most important thing in my life, the reality is the Jesus I've made once is the most important thing in my life, the Jesus who loves me and forgives my sins. But the Jesus who challenges me to love the world like he loves the world, I know little of him. Now, I know I'm not going to get invited out to Fourth of July picnic after this sermon. I understand that. But thus says the Lord, I have elected you, I have blessed you, I have given you this wonderful church and this beautiful nation. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with the opportunities that I have? You see, I, God looks down on Withful and he sees us and he he sees people around us suffering. Do you know there are people who sleep in the streets in Withel? Oh, not in our neighborhoods, no. But not too far away. There are people here who are actually starving. At the Tobin household, we'll go home and we'll decide what we're going to have for dinner. There'll be some here in Withel. 
who won't have to make that choice if they have any choice at all. Hmm. You know, the first question anyone ever asked God was, God approached Cain and said, where is your brother Abel? Do you remember Abel's response? Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. And my sister's keeper. My friends, America has been blessed by God. And God longs to bless America through the church. In order to celebrate 4th of July this year, quite frankly, we've got to close our eyes to some stuff. <laughs> hmm? Stuff that's going on in our society right now. Stuff that I think breaks God's heart. But there is hope. The hope doesn't come in a better economy, doesn't come from the right political party winning, certainly doesn't come from us all flaunting our own independence <laughs> from each other and from God. It comes when the church of Jesus Christ becomes the salt and the light and helps America remember the promise of God. I, I know the revisionists say that there were a bunch of atheists came and formed America. Can I tell you that's a lie? The, the people who founded this great nation came because they were forbidden to worship God the way they wanted to worship God. They were forbidden to serve God the way they wanted to serve God. And when they came and our great document said that we're free, we're free. It meant that we're free to worship and serve this God. I long for a time when the children of tomorrow will know the joy of what it meant to be an American 50 years ago. It wasn't perfect. And we had a lot of growing. And we've still got a lot of growing and changing to do. But people love this great country. And they loved it more passionately than fireworks and barbecue. Now, don't get me wrong. Sammy didn't like the fireworks, but I thought they were okay kind of celebratory and by the way you guys up here in Virginia are much more considerate of your animals than they are in Tennessee <laughs> in Tennessee they were shooting off fireworks until 6 in the morning they were all over with by 1030 and the old preacher even finally got some sleep <laughs> I started I had to come down to the church early this morning because um, well, let, let me preface this before I say this. I love this nation. Um, I fought for this nation, and I'm proud of that. This morning, um, I, well, yesterday I came down and I moved the flag to be right up here because I thought we might stand and pledge allegiance to the flag as part of our service today. But I, I'm not asking you to pledge allegiance to a flag. I'm asking you to pledge allegiance to a cross and a savior who died for us. He died that we might be free to be the church, not just go to church. On that flag are red stripes white stripes and stars with a blue field. Blue symbolizing heaven, white symbolizing purity and the bandages 
and truth. And the red, the blood of those who died to make our country free. Church, we have the truth. The God of heaven is with us. The question becomes, are we willing to dedicate ourselves even to the point of shedding blood that others may join the family that God loves so much? May God give us grace to be free of all that which encumbers us and allows us to commit to his purposes in our church and in our world today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you all stand and praise God with us?
into your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares to your embrace light of the Hi, George, he can play them drums, can he? <laughs> you know, it's good that we can celebrate the 4th of July. And maybe today Americans will rally around what's good about us instead of keep pointing the finger at what's bad about us. But I hope that you'll go home today and think about the fact that the problem with America might not be them, that group, that individual, but that we all share a burden. And that complicit complicity is next to sin. God will bless America. But I believe with all my heart he's going to bless it through the church if we'll just listen. Get more fired up about him than we are religion. And once again become the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. May God give us grace on this 4th of July and every day throughout the year. Thank you all for being here this morning. May God bless each one of you. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen.